Let's see a multidimensional visualization of single variable derivatives. Here's a collection of four multivariable surface plots with interesting discontinuities. Let's see how these surface plots arise from single variable calculus and how they can give us information about the derivative of a single variable function. One of the first principles you learn in a calculus class is how to find the instantaneous rate of change of a function at a particular point. So consider this function y equals f of x and this point a. How do we find the instantaneous rate of change at that exact point? To do this, we approximate the curve at the point with a line known as the tangent line. The tangent line passes through the point a comma f of a, and if we zoom in so that we're looking locally, the line looks exactly like the curve. You can't tell them apart. Our goal is to find the slope of this tangent line, and that will give us the instantaneous rate of change of the curve. Unfortunately, to find the slope of a line, we need two points, and on the tangent line, we only know the one point. To actually find the slope of the tangent line then, we create a second point, let's call it x, and we connect this point x f of x with the point a comma f of a. This line is called a secant line. We can compute the slope of this secant line by realizing that it is the change in the outputs divided by the change in the inputs. So we see that the average rate of change between these two points is f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. And now here's the trick to calculus. We can do this for any point along the curve except for the point with input x equals a. So we can compute the average rate of change for any of these points as shown here. But if we let x get really close to a and not equal a, then we actually end up with a decent approximation of the tangent line. In fact, if we let x be so close that you can't tell the difference and we zoom in, you essentially can't tell the difference between the secant line and the tangent line. So the slope of the secant line between these two points is basically equal to the slope of the tangent line. More formally, we say that the slope of the tangent line, or the instantaneous rate of change at a point, is equal to the limit as x approaches a of the average rate of change. So it's the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. To see what's going on in this process visually, we can build a brand new function g sub a of x which measures the average rate of change between a and x. We can't plug a into this function, but we can look at it graphically and figure out what that value should be by taking inputs very close to x equals a. We can plot this new average rate of change function on a separate axis. To do this, we consider every possible input x, compute the slope of the secant line between x f of x and a f of a, and record those slopes as the y values for this new function. We can't plug in x equals a, so this average rate of change function has a discontinuity at x equals a, and the curve essentially looks like this. Notice that the point we're interested in is x equals a, and there's a discontinuity in that function. But we see that we can compute the limit because that's a removable discontinuity, and that limit will give us exactly the slope of the tangent line that we're interested in. If this limit exists so that we can fill in the discontinuity as we have, we denote the missing value of g sub a by f prime of a. This is the derivative of f at x equals a, and it represents the instantaneous rate of change of the function at x equals a, or the slope of the tangent line. The problem is that this process only computes the derivative at a single input. We want a derivative function that computes this instantaneous rate of change for every single possible input x equals a, so we need to let a vary as well. To see how this works, let's consider another concrete example of the function y equals sine of x as shown here. Again, we can begin with a fixed input x equals a and label the point a comma sine of a. We can then take a second input, this time b, and label the point b sine of b and connect these two points with a secant line. Just as we did before, we can move b anywhere we like and compute the slope of the appropriate secant line, provided a and b are not the same. But in this instance, we can also think about moving a anywhere we like and we get a family of different secant lines. Or we can actually vary a and b simultaneously to create an even larger infinite family of secant lines. Once again, we can compute the slope of the secant line for any two inputs a and b as long as a and b aren't the same. This means that we can build a multivariable function, g, which takes in two inputs a of b, and outputs the average rate of change, sine of a minus sine of b, all over a minus b. This multivariable function will create a two-dimensional surface plot. Let's take a look at the surface plot for this function. So again, g a of b is sine of a minus sine of b over a minus b, and here's a representation of the surface plot. Notice that we can't plug in a equals b, so we have a collection of discontinuities that occur along the line a equals b as shown here. It turns out that if we look at that set of discontinuities a little closer, it actually forms a curve. 
Just as we filled in the missing point to get the derivative at a, we can fill in the missing curve to see something amazing. This curve is actually the entire derivative of the sine function. So if we look closely from the right angle and remove the surface, we see that the curve of discontinuity is actually the cosine curve. So if we consider a limiting process on this multivariable surface where we let the points a, b approach the point x, x, we get cosine of x. So in fact, the curve we see is the derivative of the sine function or the cosine function. Let's see one more example for good measure. Consider the function f of x equals 1 third x cubed and plot the corresponding surface g of a, b, which is f of a minus f of b over a minus b. This is the average rate of change surface plot. Notice again we see a discontinuity along the line a equals b. If we fill in those points of discontinuity with a curve and look at it from the right angle, we might see a familiar continuous curve. In particular, the derivative of f of x equals 1 third x cubed is the parabola y equals x squared. And if we look at this curve from this angle, we see the classic parabola y equals x squared. That means that if we take a limiting process where the points a, b approach x, x, of the average value surface of 1 third x cubed, we get the derivative of 1 third x cubed. Now it's your turn if you happen to know a little bit of calculus already. Let's look at those four surface plots we started the video with. Each is an average rate of change for a particular function. Can you look at the associated curve of discontinuities and guess which function we use to generate these average rate of change surface plots? Here's a hint. The four functions used where f of x equals the natural log of x, f of x equals cosine of x, f of x equals e to the x, and f of x equals x to the fourth. Can you match these four functions with the appropriate average value surface plot? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this non standard way to visualize first derivatives as discontinuities in surface plots of average rates of change. And if you liked it, do me a favor and share it with a friend, leave a like, or maybe even subscribe for more fun math visuals.